Hey everybody, it's your crazy fan girl Shime. We hope you guys are having an amazing day. So today, we are going to be reviewing Kingdom Hearts 3. I mean, okay, <laughs> I have mixed feelings about this video game because you know how much of a massive fan I am of Kingdom Hearts 3. I've loved Kingdom Hearts since I was like younger than 10 years old and I grew up with this game. It, it's such an amazing story. It's very complicated now, but it is still such an incredible game. However, this game didn't really meet all my expectations. However, there were many dots that were tipped off my list. However, I will say that I do have a few problems with the game and I'm going to break it down with you guys because I, I really did like this game. It had a few good points to it. Um, things I did enjoy, however, there are things that I just did not enjoy and things that could have been done way better and I feel like Square Enix may have had their eyes upon a different aspect of this video game and were too busy focusing on that other than another point that I'm going to make about what was what should have been looked at for this game. However, Let's just jump straight into it because I want to go into massive detail about this. Okay, let's start off with the gameplay. It it was a really great range of combats that we had in this game. Obviously, it's taking from all the previous games that we've had from different Kingdom Hearts games and they're drawing on different combat skills and putting it into Kingdom Hearts 3 because it's the big lead up to fighting Xehanort and the final game in the Xehanort saga. However, a lot of these combos and combat skills and commands were given to us in the first world which was the Hercules world and that was very surprising to see that we were given it so easily like they just gave it to us and we didn't have to earn it that seemed a bit like really easy too easy and I was like no like it, there should have been a build up to getting all these skills and the fact that all of these different skills were given to us at the same time felt almost suffocating like we had to like look through every single one that we got like we got the reaction straight away we got the um what's it called the Disney flow motion rides like those ones were included as well already from the very beginning We we just got way too much at the beginning and I felt like it was it was way too much for the beginning It should have been definitely spread out more across the whole entire game Especially like for example like very much with the way that they did with the links like with obviously Simba and Wreck-It Ralph etc They should have spread it out throughout the whole entire game That would have been great to see and a greater build up to the final battle instead of getting all the skills that we Got at the very beginning of the game. I did not I, And I feel like a lot of people didn't like see the, the attraction flow rides didn't really appeal to me I really tried to avoid using them at all costs like sometimes I'd use it just to see how it is but then the annoying thing was that Triangle <laughs> was used for so many different parts of the game so it was like for the reactions for the flow motion rides and just for Different party members as well. So that was very confusing as well at times So I felt like it was just way too much especially with the attraction flow and I was like I really just don't want this anymore So when they brought in the the critical mode and then they were like you don't need to have attraction flow rides Everyone was like yes and even with me, I was so happy. I was like, yes, this is so good. And it was, it, it made it way better. However, at the same time, I do understand why Square Enix wanted to show off all these different gameplay skills and combos, mainly because, you know, it was a new engine. It was a brand new, like, era into the Kingdom Hearts series that we were entering along with the new graphics and the story. It was like a new level of like content for us and everyone was so excited. I mean every like I, I still am when talking about it. I felt like as well as the abilities and the combos being given earlier, this took away the impact of what occurred in Dream Drop Distance where Sora was stripped of all his powers and especially from the secret ending from Birth by Sleep 0.2 because you know, there was that build up and then we got the secret cut at the end of that game and we saw that Sora was stripped of all his powers and that we had to rebuild it through Kingdom Hearts 3. However, that was taken away because of the fact that in the Colosseum world of Hercules, like, it was straight away given to us and literally just fed to us. So it was so easy and it took away that impact of the story from those games. So that was a bit sad. Another quick thing, Shot Lock should have been given to us way later into the game instead of being given to us straight away because to be honest Sora wouldn't know how to learn that unless he learnt it from Ventus, Terra or Aqua because they are the only ones who learnt not learnt, sorry I apologise who knew that 
from Birth by Sleep. We never had it as Sora throughout any of the other games. Um, only for Birth by Sleep characters, they knew it. So, the fact that Sora got that straight away off the bat, I was like, no, 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 this is, no. Um, so that was a bit frustrating to see that that had happened. However, overall, I did enjoy most of the abilities. It was just that I didn't really enjoy the attraction flow ride, so... Definitely hoping that they don't put that into any more future games. Okay, now we're going to move on to the worlds of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, Disney is my, f just one of my favorite franchises in the world and just, I have so many favorites. You guys know this, like how much I critique the remakes that are being made, but also these, these Disney ones that were in put into this game, I was so excited to see it because obviously we'd never seen them before in previous Kingdom Hearts games. We did see a few repetitive worlds, so that's why with this one I was so excited because I was like, yes, there's brand new Disney worlds and Disney movies in it, so I was so excited. And I will say that I did thoroughly enjoy many of the worlds in this game. They were beautifully crafted, beautifully done, and the stories that we got to go through were just amazing, especially because the Disney canon stories were also canon with Kingdom Hearts, so that was so good, and I loved how they, that, they made that connection, because I was really thinking that Disney would be a lot stricter with the stories now that, you know, like, Disney has kind of like a more, like, involvement in the games now, because especially with the promotion and stuff that we saw, um from Disney, so I was like, oh no, they're gonna have so much of a hold on Kingdom Hearts, like, what are they gonna do? But, it actually was pretty okay, like, I enjoyed all the stories that we got to go through. However, I will say the worst and the most disappointing worlds for me were the Frozen world, Arendelle. Okay, now, oh my god, this world was so disappointing because, I mean, like, this was the one that was mostly like hyped up for and also in the advertisement it was always like frozen 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 and i was like oh it was just such a massive disappointment and the fact that you know like it was very repetitive it was like we had to go up the mountain see elsa but then we got knocked back then we had to go back up and then we got knocked back again and then something would happen then we have to go back up again and then the fact that we didn't even get to go back to Arendelle after the entire story was done was so disappointing because the fact is that like you, like when you go back to the Hercules world and you go back to for example the Tangled world there's so much stuff still going on after those stories are finished like you go back to the Colosseum world and they're rebuilding Tangled like Rapunzel is there and she's like with the family and she's with like the people and stuff interacting with them and that's really cool however with Frozen it was just really disappointing and even when you actually go up to the actual castle that like you know Elsa makes through the let it go sequence it's so small in the graphics it was really disappointing to see that to be honest I really thought it would be like a big castle like you could go through it but yeah, 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 no no <laughs> oh the second I mean the second worst world for me was the hundred acre wood I mean come on like literally the only place that you recreated was rabbits home and those mini games like come on like I know that they were focusing on other parts of the game, but come on, Square Enix, like, like, ugh. It's because Hundred Acre Wood is so loved, and I love Hundred Acre Wood, so I was so excited to see it. And the fact that we only got to see one part of it with two mini games, and the fact that they brought Lumpy in, and we didn't even get to have much interaction with her, was very disappointing. I really thought that we'd be able to get more interaction with her, but we didn't, so that was really disappointing. And just the fact that it was so small, and it went for literally like how many minutes? It probably went up for tops 20 minutes or so, even less. It was, it was, that was just so disappointing. Oh my god. Oh, This other one is just, just why? San Francisco, I mean, on another level, is just so disappointing because, I mean, this world also was so hyped up. And the fact that they did not show anything of San Francisco until the very, very, very end of the promotional season for Kingdom Hearts, it was so disappointing that it was so, like, how should I say it? Limited. That's how I should say it. Like, the fact that even after you finish the game, 
not the game, sorry, you finish the, the world as a whole and you go back, it's like you have to ask permission of when you're able to go to different places. It's like, no, I want to be able to go freely and go and see the whole entire of San Francisco by myself. And the fact that you can't even go back to the bridge after that first sequence, it's just so disappointing. Like, I really expected a lot more from San and Francisco. However, I will say that I did like the NPCs. Those were so awesome. I loved, like, being able to walk with them and stuff. That was really, really cool. I like that. However, it still was disappointing to see that we couldn't even, like, go into the world by ourselves. And, and that the fact that there wasn't much to go around and look at, to be honest, like, it was only, like, those massive buildings. I really wanted to go into certain areas and have a look. However, we weren't able to, so that was just so disappointing. And just... Yeah, I really expected a lot more from that world as well, so that was disappointing. Another disappointment about the Disney worlds was the fact that we didn't get to actually verse any Disney villains properly without them being in their heartless form. This was really disappointing. I, I understand why they probably wanted to go along with the heartless path, mainly because of the fact, you know, Xehanort making all the heartless, blah, 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 blah. But it, it just really was really disappointing because of the fact that, you know, like, in Kingdom Hearts 1 and even in Kingdom Hearts 2, you verse the actual Disney villains without them being heartlesses. You you actually verse them. And I think that might have had to do with perhaps Disney having a hold on Kingdom Hearts. So that might have been one of the reasons. And that's just really disappointing because of the fact that that was my major excitement for this game. That, you know, we get to verse Mother Gothel and then we get to verse, like, for example, um, who would it have been in Toy Story? Um, for Toy Story, I thought, um... That big bear would have a, like, the, what's his name? Oh, the strawberry smelling one. The strawberry bear from Toy Story 3. I can't remember his name, but I thought that we would verse him. That would have been cool. Or just some other villain. Um, that would have been really, really cool. However, the fact that we didn't get to was disappointing. And I was really sad that we didn't get to actually go through that and get to actually verse the, the actual Disney villains. Another thing that I have a problem with is Hans as the villain for Frozen because of the fact that, again, we did not meet Hans at all, like, face to face as Sora with Hans. And the fact that we only saw him carrying Elsa from the mountain and then he's, like, thrown on the ground after, obviously, Anna, like, sacrificed herself and then he turns into the Heartless, it just made no sense. It was very, very lazy, especially with the stories intertwining. It was really disappointing and I really expected a lot more. However, I will say his Heartless form was so good and was amazing to verse. However, it just still was really, really disappointing to see that we didn't get much of that character development with him in the story. So that was really disappointing. My favourites though from the Disney worlds was Toy Story, Tangled and Pirates of the Caribbean. Now guys, these literally, these three are like one of, some of my favourite Disney movies of all time. Apart from Beauty and the Beast Aladdin etc, those weren't in this game. Like the Disney worlds within this game, like these three were my absolute favourite. Toy Story was just so well done and I had so much like nostalgia going through this world and like playing with like Buzz and Woody and stuff like oh it was so good and the music was very well done and they really paid attention to those little details for Toy Story as well and the the voice acting as well for Toy Story was so good like obviously like people know that they got Tom Hanks's brother to do Woody and I can't remember who did Buzz but he was so good as well it was spot on and then Tangled obviously they got the original cast except for Rapunzel they didn't get Mandy Moore to play her they got someone else to do it they did so well with Tangled. Tangled, oh, it was so beautiful. They did that so well. And yeah, she's one of my favorite princesses. So I was so glad that they did that well. And just such great, such great. Ah, it was so good. Ah. And Pirates of the Caribbean, holy Lord, that world was just gorgeous and just the story was so good like yes finding those crabs was annoying as hell but it was just such a great world and being able to control the pirate ships and stuff that was so awesome i loved that and then this was literally the only disney villain we could verse which was davy jones that was the only disney villain we could verse and i'm just gonna say so good. I was so thankful that he wasn't in heartless form. So thankful. So good. It was such a great boss battle that one and just the cutscenes were so good. Oh my god. Oh, it was great. It was great. Absolutely amazing. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the original world disappointments that we had because 
though Twilight Town was stunning, it was freaking butchered! It was so disappointing because, I mean, you have this amazing world from Kingdom Hearts 2 that became one of, like, the, like, everyone's favourites. One of them. It was a bit annoying as the prologue for Kingdom Hearts 2, but it became a favourite. And just, it was so disappointing because you literally limited it to, you know, that area with the tram area and then you go to the forest. That new area though with the, like, the secret passages and stuff, that was really cool. However, with the, the forest and stuff, it's a waste of time because you can't even go into the mansion without being in a cutscene. So it was just like, what was the point of all this? Like, why? Seriously, that hype up to being in Twilight Town was just... Not good. I did not like that. Oh my god. And Hollow Bastion. I mean, come on. If you at like if you had those worlds made for the cutscenes, couldn't we have gotten at least a few scenes with Sora there? Or at least I was because this is what I thought, like, because we did see a lot of Riku and Mickey going to Hollow Bastion. I thought that we could have at least been them and going through Hollow Bastion, that would have been so good. And being able to unravel the story instead of seeing them as cutscenes all the time, it would have been so good to be able to have at least travelled as them through Hollow Bastion. That was really disappointing because I really wanted to go to Hollow Bastion in this game, but well, aka Radiant Garden. I keep forgetting that is Radiant Garden, but I still am going to call it Hol Hollow Bastion because that was like the name that we've all like grown up with since Kingdom Hearts. And um, another thing that's sad was obviously the fact that there were no Final Fantasy characters because Kingdom Hearts is well known to have the Final Fantasy characters in it. I'm not sure why they didn't have them in it. It was just a little bit disappointing. Like I understand, like it's a tiny minuscule thing. However, I just really would have liked to have seen them. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into the main story and talk about it and unravel it. And we're gonna go into more detail about it because I'm gonna talk about a small part of the main story and then I'm gonna go into like the final phase of the game so if you have not played the game or like know nothing about the story please leave now because I'm literally going to go into detail about it except for like I'm gonna go a little bit into the intro part of the story and then the final phases you guys need to leave okay you need to leave 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 okay um this is just like minuscule things dot points that i'm going to just talk about the story was good overall however again like i said before i would have really liked to have played more as riku and even partner up with mickey more and again it would have been great to have been able to have been playing as them and going through hollow bastion with them and even like more with like the dark world i think that's what it's called the dark world like actually walking through it as riku and mickey and finding their way to that final boss battle area where Aqua was and it would have just been great because it would have been great to see that character develop it more with Riku and Mickey as well because obviously they're two partners going through that together and obviously we saw that character development Sora, Donald and Goofy so it would have been great to see more of Riku and Mickey together. Okay now oh my god this is a massive point I don't even get that my glasses fell but oh my god what the actual f was Kyrie's storyline what the actual f because she was literally used in the exact same way as she was used in kingdom hearts 1 and kingdom hearts 2 however only this time using a keyblade now when we got to like battle with her and uh who was it her and axel that was cool like we got to see her fight and she was good but then what was her like whole point in the game other than being sacrificed at the end of the game now that's a big spoiler so you should have left by now anyway it was just like i really thought that square enix and tetsu and namura and the writers would take that step further with kairi and make her into a like a like a more important get not more important but just like have more involvement with the story and with the actual like fighting and just everything in general and it was just so disappointing the fact that we just didn't get anything from her it was just uh, it was just so disappointing i was just so upset when when after finishing the game i was like are you serious really like come on but anyway let's move on the pacing of this game though was really good at the beginning however it did pivot and go downhill 
mainly after, how should I say it, probably where, probably after the Tangled World went kind of downhill with the pacing, specifically because of the fact that they were trying to match the pacing with the main story and the Disney stories, um, but yeah, it was just, it, the pacing just went a bit wonky, and Kingdom Hearts has been famous for this, and the Kingdom Hearts series has been famous for this, however, I will say Kingdom Hearts 2 is one of their better paced games. And Dream Drop Distance, actually. I really think the pacing for Dream Drop Distance was great. However, this one was just all over the place. And to be honest, they really could have sprinkled the organization members' battles more across the actual game. Instead of us only versing them in the final, like, part of the game, that was, I mean, that was great. I loved that, that kind of, like, imagery that they had and what they were going for. That was cool. However, it would have been really, really nice if we had actually been able to verse them throughout the other world, specifically because it kind of would have reminded us and, like, made us think of the ways that we had to do that in number two. However, it is understandable because, obviously, we don't want to kill them yet. But, I mean, in Kingdom Hearts 2, we verse, like, Demix and stuff, like, three times until we until we actually properly killed him. So that would have been a cool way as well to have integrated that into this game. That was just a bit disappointing, especially because just like we only got to the very end and we had to verse all of them. So it felt very rushed, um, specifically because I felt like we had ties with each organization member in, in different ways. Like, and you see that within that final phase of the game. Like, I'm gonna go into more detail about it after, but yeah, it would have just been great to have more conversation and more interaction with these characters throughout the game more, instead of just having little, like, you know, like, nitpicky moments with them. It, that just felt very, like, repetitive, and it got really tiring towards the end. I was like, okay, why don't we get into the final part of the game? <laughs> okay, so the final phase of the game, and this is right after we finish either one of the Disney worlds. For me, it was San Francisco, and then we got into the final phase of the game where we actually get more into the main story. I will say this, it was so good. It was very enjoyable and I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a great final phase. I loved saving Aqua and being able to please Riku again in Verso was really, really great because uh, we obviously got that like build up in Birth by Sleep Zero Bird 2 because of the fact that Riku found out that Aqua sacrificed herself to save Riku and protect him while he was running to the door. And for him to be able to fight her was so good. And then that Sora and Riku part. Gay power! No, I'm joking. <laughs> people are gonna kill me for that. But I'm joking. Our of friendship. I know that people ship them online, so that's why I said that. That's just a little joke. <laughs> but yeah, fighting Aqua was a challenge at first. As you guys saw, I got killed twice. And then I finally beat her, which was good. And then... Oh, this is one of my favorite moments even though we only spent like five minutes there the land of departure In the new graphics was gorgeous and that music just made me tear up because it was like oh my god We're finally like back in this area. It's so good and oh, And playable aqua as well Oh, it was so good. So 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 good. So good. Oh and waking up Ventus they did this part beautifully, like the fact that, you know, like Aqua's on the ground and then Sora's like crying out for Aqua and then just the heartbeat, like the doom doom and then it goes to Ventus and Sora together. Oh, that was so good. That was beautifully done. I feel like the main story, obviously Tetsuya and Nomura had more of a say in it because obviously it's his story, etc. It was so good, that part. I loved it. That was very well done and I really enjoyed that part. Okay. <laughs> The Keyblade Graveyard was so cool! And it was just so torturous as well because I loved the battle of the 1000 Heartless. That was great at the beginning and then we had to do it like three times. So that was a little bit annoying but it was great overall. And okay though, I have some questions though for the cutscene part where we face Terranaut. Oh, that the first time we see that scene was so beautiful and was so 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 good. However, I will say that a lot of character decisions in this game made me really disappointed, specifically with Aqua in this scene, like, you know, like the thousand heart, well, million of heartless kind of like, like comes up and then she just gives up and I was like, um, excuse me, Aqua, wake up. I was like, that probably is not what she would do at all. 
So I was really confused. It was like a very cheap way of kind of like segueing into the fact that Sora kind of dies in a way in this part. So, and even with Sora as well, like just giving up so quickly, it was just like, no, this feels wrong. And yeah, I just felt like a lot of character decisions as well in this game was just, it was very, very, ugh. It was just, they were wrong. I didn't enjoy some of the character decisions that were made. Okay, the final world though, my heart just sunk. Cause I was like, wait, what is going on in this world? And the, ugh, the annoying thing is in this part of the game, it was like two major plot points were in this world. And many of us missed it because it just like, the, the, really important parts about like the actual like the foretellers and I think it was Namine and I was like why like to, why would you put such important plot points in this part of the game in stars because you know we're not going to be able to finish like looking through all of them at once like your main point was to like obviously like regain life as Sora so that was like your main priority like you're not gonna look up around and stuff like that was for me I don't know <laughs> because I just wanted to get to the point but like that really kind of annoyed me I was like why did you do that like that's so silly but that might have just been my fault however I really did enjoy this area like I know a lot of people found it annoying but I was really fearful in this whole area I was like oh my god what if we don't do this on time is there a time limit like it, 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 like so many things could happen so I was so nervous but it was very well done I loved how they constructed that area that was really cool okay I know a lot of people didn't like this part but fighting the lit the I'm probably gonna say it wrong, the lich like that was the heartless's name and getting the hearts back was one of my favorite parts of the game I loved it because he regained all the hearts I was so fearful in this part because I was like I felt like if we didn't do it in a certain time limit we'd lose them so I was so scared but it was so great I loved this area and you go back to all the different worlds that kind of called me back to um Kingdom Hearts 1 where you have to go to the different worlds and you fight the different heartlesses that made me think of that that was so cool also, ugh, another thing that's just so silly and why, like the first, like one of the very first warnings about the f power of awakening only came at the end of the game, like why? Are you kidding me? Like come on. Because the fact is like we've been told millions of times in Kingdom Hearts 3 and Dream Drop Distance that we have to regain the power of waking, but then it's like if it's so dangerous, why are we even gonna go get it? But at the same time, it's like, we never got proper warnings from like Yen Sid and stuff until the very, 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 very end of the game and this point. And I was like, why? Just why? It's just so silly. Also, fighting the Lich and stuff, we, 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 we didn't regain Kairi's heart. She was just floating in the middle of nowhere. Like that, like I get she's a princess and stuff, but why okay so after the b fighting the lich it was going back to the graveyard now this part confuses me because we got returned before the cutscene happened last time like a lot of people got confused about this because we thought that the game was broken or something but the same scene reoccurred and obviously lingering will showed up i'll talk about that in a minute but why did they redo the whole scene i don't understand that like it makes no sense specifically the use of time traveling in the canon of Kingdom Hearts it just makes no sense like why did we have to get like taken back in time to that point and then go through that cutscene again I do not understand that but guys the lingering will oh was so good however where did he go <laughs> after versing Terranot in that part he just disappeared randomly like I get that they want to include everything that's happened throughout the series but I mean is that all we're gonna get like obviously like people have like um theorized about what could have happened to him like the game is trying said he could have just like used up the the amount of power that was left in the armor and then he probably got disintegrated and then the spirit obviously left it because Terranaut was back however I was just really confused just like why that even happened like if we only got to see it for that short amount of time. And the fact that Terra not defeated the Lingering Will off camera was just like really disappointing. It was like, okay, that's so random. Like it just, it didn't make sense. There were some of my favorite moments in this part of the game. So fighting 
with the spirit of Ephemera and the falling Keyblade is oh, the chills I got in that moment and just I had tears in my eyes as well I was like oh my god this is so awesome and just it was it was a great scene and just a fight battle as well it was so good and then Yen Sid coming in there like a boss. Oh my god. That was so so good. I loved that part so much Oh, and also when the 13 Organization members Zayn and then seven meet. Oh my god. That moment was beautiful So good. I will say this the battle against the 13 was great Like I said, I would have liked to have had like miniature battles with them throughout the rest of the game However, we didn't get that so that was unfortunate, but beautifully done. Each battle was very well crafted, I will say that. It was very well done. One of my favourites probably was the... when Roxas came in. Oh my god! Oh, and the reunions we had in this game was so good. So, oh, I got really emotional when, like, Roxas turned up, as you guys can see. Oh, yes, that, that was so good. And he was so powerful as well. And I really loved the reunion of the Wayfinder trio. Oh, that was so emotional. Like, yes, I cried when, obviously, Roxas and Shion and Axel got back together. But, I mean, the people who have gone through the worst was probably Aqua, Ventus, and Terra. Like, they went through hell in Birth by Sleep. So seeing them back together was just so bittersweet. And I was so happy. Like, yay! So good. And I... I I'm one of those people who ship Aqua and Terra together, so I was so happy, I was like, yes! Oh, but it was so bittersweet to say goodbye to Xemnas and Ansem, mainly because we've built this story, we've we've gone through this story with both of them, mainly Ansem more than Xemnas, but it was so bittersweet to say goodbye to them, and in a way, like, when we said goodbye to Ansem, it was like, he was telling us to kind of like start moving forward from that point. Like he knew that in a way like Xehanort might be on the losing side. So he was like move forward and go on with your journey. So I was like oh my god that's like so sweet. And I felt kind of like teary eyed when he said that. I was like oh that's so sweet in a way. That's so nice of him to say that even though he gave us hell through this whole entire series. And oh. Xemnas is one of my favourite bosses as well, like all like villains of the games. It's so good. And I really enjoyed like his final fight. That was good. And just the little talk he had, like in a way, like he was trying to re like find out. Like he, I mean, like from Kingdom Hearts 2 as well, he's been confused with those emotions and like whether it's a heart is only made up of anger and you know, like hate, etc. But in that moment, it felt like he actually wanted to search a new path with a new heart. So in a way, I was like, oh, that's gonna be cute. But obviously, that wouldn't happen because he's part of Xehanort so in a way he'd get destroyed anyway but um it was kind of it was kind of bittersweet for that so I was like mm, oh, I'm gonna miss you Xemnas but I'll, I'll miss Ansem a lot more because I mean like he's been there from the very beginning we had no idea who he was at the beginning and then it grew out into this massive story like oh it was very bittersweet and I got really teary eyed when saying bye to him so that was really beautifully done that farewell okay again I'm not gonna touch upon this more but Kari being the damsel, just like, why? Okay, so moving on. Okay, so Scarlet and Kylum. Oh, hallelujah. It was so beautiful. It was literally like heaven. It was so gorgeous, beautifully created, and oh, I just loved it. It was so good. I was, and I was so excited to explore it. Five minutes later, we destroy it. Like, what? It was just so rushed, like, at least give us time to go through the place a little bit instead of just destroying it on command. Like, that's crazy. Like, I was really shocked that it was destroyed so quickly. Okay, now, again, if you haven't left by this point, you need to leave right now because I'm going to talk about the ending and I'm going to talk about the secret ending and the epilogue, so please, shoot! Okay, so the final stages of the game were confusing. <laughs> they, they, uh, I was so confused when suddenly it became, like, into reality, like, and it shocked me, because this is why, like, I had not much of a reaction when this happened in the game. Um, when Xehanort really, in reality, wasn't the Seeker of Darkness, but the Seeker of Light, and then, you know, he, like, this is what he wanted to do, and I'm quoting what he said in the final part, because I actually went back, I watched it again and again and again until I understood it, and I even went back and played it, like, another two times, and then I was like, oh my god, you've got to be kidding me, this is what he wanted, so yeah, this is from a quote. 
from the actual game. A purge. The world will be returned once it started. The world began in darkness, and from that came light. From that light came people, and the people had hearts, and the hearts had darkness. So, in reality, he wanted to create a pure light. He didn't want darkness in light. And I was like, hold the freaking phone. Like, what? Are you kidding me? After all this time, like, uh, it was just so anticlimactic. The fact that, you know, um, we've been building this whole thing up, like, Xehanort, the Seeker of Darkness, we're gonna destroy him, and then suddenly he ends up being the Seeker of Light? Like, what? So in reality, he just hated how darkness was created within the light, and he wanted to recall Kingdom Hearts and control it, and again, quoting from what he said, the weak from polluting the world with their darkness. Um, what? And then, and then another quote, the light, the symbol of the world's hope, was devoured by shadow, leaving nothing but ruin and utter fail. Mate, have you seen what you've done with the use of darkness in all the freaking games that you've been in in the Kingdom Hearts series? Essentially, he wanted to be the defender of light, but in the end he did fail. And in reality, and in, in the sense that we've all kind of come to it. And in a way, this kind of shows, in a way, and I'm not saying this in terms of any history or anything, in terms of real life and stuff, I'm just saying, he wanted to control it in a way like a dictator, like he wanted to make sure that everything was precision, like, like any type of darkness would stay away from the light and stuff. In a way, I accept this storyline that's come out of nowhere for Xehanort, however, it is disappointing with the fact that we've had this build up for so long, um, I guess, like, if we had more hints throughout the rest of the game that he didn't have bad intentions, that would have been great, especially if they had done it even within just Kingdom Hearts 3. If they had just sprinkled those little, like, seeds of doubt within, like, the game, the fact that Xehanort actually wasn't the bad guy. Like, he was trying to... Well, he was the bad guy, and he was going... He was a good guy, like, with good intentions, but he was going in the wrong way with it. So he was using the wrong um, strategies to reach this goal. There, there could have been better ways to have done it, in a way. So in a way, he was a good guy, an anti-hero. And again, like I said, I would have liked to have seen that sprinkled throughout Kingdom Hearts 3, and we could have seen like, oh wait, maybe he's not the villain, maybe not, maybe he's like, maybe he's just going about it the wrong way. So I was really, 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 like, disappointed with the fact that we only got that massive drop at the end and everyone was left confused, like, it was just like, no, no, this is such a massive disappointment. So I, I accept it, mainly because of what's in the epilogue and stuff, because I'm excited for that, but, um... It was just disappointing because we built up to this for how many years? So that was really disappointing. And I hope that they learned their lesson with this. Um, in terms of story writing, they need to do a better job in Kingdom Hearts 4. If, like, because Tetsuo Nomura has said that he wants to continue all the series and make it, like, more games. I'm just going to say it. If he wants the, <laughs> the series to continue in the way that he wants it, he needs to maybe fix up the story writing because this game was just all over the place so I really hope that they learn from this game. However I will say the ending to this game was beautiful like all the characters coming together and just at the beach and they were all together hanging out like everyone was reunited except for Sora. Okay the, the, again the power of waking we didn't even get a warning about that until like the very end of the game twice literally literally before Sora did it, and by young Xehanort, so just the, ugh, it was just like, why? It really should have been explained more in throughout the Kingdom Hearts games, or the games that were really close towards Kingdom Hearts 3, like Dream Drop Distance, and, mm, no, not 0.2 Birth by Sleep, oh, maybe a little bit, but not like, it should have definitely have been touched upon more in Dream Drop Distance if that was the case. And again, I was left with a broken heart, just like, ugh gutted, was so shocked. But then I'm just gonna jump to the secret ending because that's connected to the ending um, and I'll touch upon the epilogue at the end because oh my god. Okay, the fact that in the secret ending we saw Sora in it again, I felt like that was a massive 
Like, to be honest, I felt cheated by the fact that we got to see Sora in the epilogue. Mainly, and just hear me out, mainly because it took away that emotional punch from the ending that we got. And in a way, it, it just felt like it was done for shock value. Like, the fact that we got to see Sora, like, disappear or die. And then it was like, oh, he's back. Like, just why? Like, it just felt like it just, it didn't work out properly. Like, that could have been done better. For example, like, because we know that there's going to be another game between, obviously, the next Kingdom Hearts 4. But, like, it really could have been done a lot better. And in a way, like, the ending, the secret ending for this game could have been the secret ending for the next game that leads into Kingdom Hearts 4. That would have been cool. However, it's just sad that we, we didn't get that, and I, it felt like we had been cheated, especially because of the fact that, you know, Sora's still alive, and Riku's going to go find him. Like, that was like, ugh, okay. However, um, and I didn't realise it was Shibuya until later. Oh, but the fact that Shibuya is, like, in this, or, like, it might be even just this, like, like, even, like, reality, that's kind of cool, and I'm excited to see where that goes. But yeah, I freaked out when I realized it was Shibuya after because I think I was just in shock from what was happening with the ending, Xehanort, etc. So I was like, eh, what is this place? I don't know what it is. And then I realized it was Shibuya after and I was like, oh my god, oh my god! I was freaking out and it was so cool. Okay, so the epilogue, oh my god! The fact that Zig, I, okay, so I know that there was like hints towards Zigba being, you know, like, someone who was from the past in Dream Drop Distance, still, it was a massive shock because it's just like, oh, and also his death in the other part was just so, sh like, hardcore, like, in a way, like, everyone thought, like, he committed suicide or something, like, that was dark stuff. I was like, holy crap, but so good. And just the epilogue, oh my god, and, oh, I have, I, I have a theory and I have a theory about what's happened to Ava, but that's going to be released soon. It, it's going to be released soon, don't worry. I'm very excited to share it with you guys. But, oh my god, guys. It's just crazy. Like, yeah, and just the fact that the Foretellers and the Master of Masters are going to, like, like, it's obviously, like, showing it that they're going to be the next kind of, like, villains of the Kingdom Hearts series. So, that's very exciting. I'm very excited to see how that works out and pans out. And that's making me really excited for the rest of the series. And I'm hoping that, especially from Kingdom Hearts 3, they've learned um, a lot of lessons from, you know, like, learning curves and stuff. Especially with the graphics and the gaming systems and stuff. But now, with the next few games that come out, I hope that they're going to be a lot better than this game. Okay, so to conclude my review of Kingdom Hearts 3, I thoroughly enjoyed the game, mainly because it's one of my childhood favourites. I really enjoyed it. However, there were massive parts of this game that really disappointed me. And I'm just going to say one more part. I think the downfall of this game also was the fact that marketing let it down. The fact that they released so much content on the different worlds and also the fact that they showed majority of the ending, like the final phases, like they showed Scarlet and Kylum, they showed the final world, they showed like most of the cutscenes that we saw in the Keyblade graveyard, that was really disappointing and I was like, eh. They, sh they probably shouldn't have done that. Like, I felt like that, even when I was going to watch that trailer, I was like, I really don't want to watch this. But obviously I did it to react to it because I've obviously, like, trailers are what I react to. But, um, and obviously, like, I, I, to now I've kind of become, like, really, like, and now I've become really, like, um, how should I say it? Like, I'm not too shocked when spoilers come out, especially because I do reviews and stuff, so I always have to be open to that. However, with the fact that most of the ending was shown in the trailers and the marketing was just showing too much, I felt like that was the majority of the downfall of what happened with Kingdom Hearts 3, so I hope that they learn their lesson for the next game when marketing it. Don't show everything in the trailers, like I get you want to obviously feed the, the audiences and give them something to look at, but don't show too much. Because I felt like that was the downfall of like a lot of what happened with Kingdom Hearts 3. As a video game, I'm going to be giving it a 7 out of 10. Because to be honest, I did have not major expectations. Because I knew like if I had big, big, big expectations, I would just be totally, totally screwed over. And I would have definitely been screwed over if I had massive high expectations. But I am going to give it a 7 because it's like, it, it could have been done way better. And... 
However, I am going to be positive about it because this also can be a learning curve for Square Enix, especially when they go into the future with new Kingdom Hearts games for the series. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on Kingdom Hearts 3 and what you thought of the game. I know that there's a lot of different opinions on this game and I'm totally open to listening to all of your opinions because, I mean, we all have different opinions about things. Like, you may have enjoyed it a lot more than I did, but... I did enjoy the game, it was a great game, I loved going through the, the stories and stuff and the Disney World, so good, but I did, I did, I did have some expectations that I did want to meet, so that's why I'm giving it a 7 out of 10. So again, remember that I will be touching upon a theory about what has happened to Ava. I, I'm really excited to share this theory with you guys. It will be a podcast though, so please remember if you haven't checked out my podcast, Check me out on SoundCloud. I've also just joined Apple Podcasts, so if you have an Apple product or an iPhone or an iPad, go and check me out on the Apple Store and Apple Podcasts. And check out Crazy Fango Reviews. All my podcasts will be there. Remember to subscribe to that as well to keep up to date with all my new releases of podcasts. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Fango out.